Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are going to be starting part three in our seven part fundamentals of blacksmithing series and today we're going to be talking about spreading. Okay, before we get this whole thing started, so whenever you're needing to take and spread material, essentially what you are doing, you're fullering the material with the cross peen of the hammer. Now this can be done on the anvil surface, flat like so, and this can also be done in, junk, in conjunction with the horn of the anvil in certain circumstances. Now, whenever you're flattening out a piece of material on the face of the anvil, full face hammer blows on the face of the anvil, you are naturally creating a spreading action. Now, the sharper your peen is, in general, the more aggressive that action is going to be. Most people's peens of their hammer are a nice radius like this, about a 3 8 inch radius across. And this is just a good general peen to take and do uh, spreading actions very efficiently. Now, if you'll notice in my main shop forging hammer, this is a flat face. This is a flat on the back of my peen with the edges radiused off so it doesn't leave any galt galling on the material. I have found that this is still as aggressive as this 3 8 radius with the only difference is I feel that I get a more even spread of the material as I go along. Now you can go too far with this and end up getting something that's sharp like this like less than a quarter inch radius and this is not good for spreading material this will do more of a cutting like action than a spreading action. So in this case, this is better for putting in texture on like leaves or veins or things of that nature. This is where a hammer like this is handy or when you need to spread a very minute little bit of area like in a rivet or something like that very aggressively. But on a larger piece of material, this is gonna look a lot choppier and it will be harder to get those chop marks out later on. Basically what we are doing is we are displacing, I'll show you with the big hammer here, you are displacing the material in the same direction or crossways of whichever way the peen is shaped. So if your hammer is a cross peen, you are lengthening it when you're hammering it in this direction. And then if you're hammering it this way you are widening the piece. So that's what we're going over today and I'm going to be showing you how that works in principle. I will be using my hammer and we will be working on a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat stock. So I'll go ahead and bring this out of the fire. And show you the technique. So whenever you need to spread a piece of material you want to work from the center and then work back towards yourself and away from center. So you start right in the middle and then work with overlapping hammer blows back to yourself, preferably hitting the material, and then work away from yourself with overlapping hammer blows. And as you can see, that's how that spreads that out like that. Okay? So that is the technique of spreading. Now, this is only the first part of the operation. Once you get this hammered and spread to shape, you have to dress out all this lumpiness. In certain applications, you want this for an aesthetic, but most applications, you're just widening the bar stock out. A lot of things like knife blades, for instance, and things like that, where you're trying to get some extra width in the bar or thin out an edge where you're working away from yourself, trying to thin that down. You're not gonna want these in your final product. That just takes a lot of grinding. So, you want to dress this out. So I'll go ahead and heat this up again and we will dress out and plainish out all those spread marks there. Okay, 
Okay, got this nice and hot. Now instead of using the peen of the hammer, we're going to flip it over to the flat face of the hammer and we're going to dress out all these hammer marks. You want to keep your hammer face running and planishing flat with the pitch. So if this is spread out in an angle, you want to keep it as flat to that angle as you can so you're not leaving little other chop marks in the piece. And now we're down into what we call a planishing heat. This is from a very dull red to a black heat is a planishing heat. And just like that, we planished out all of our hammer marks. Except for, you know, just a few little divots there. And the back side takes care of itself. So that is how you take and do spreading. This operation is indefinitely valuable. It's one of the fundamental techniques of blacksmithing as it is used a lot in ornamental work and, you know, blade work of any kind, edge weaponry, things of that nature, all require you to do some sort of spreading of material or thinning out that or widening the material of some sort. Whenever you get into more complex forging operations using power hammers and things like that, it can be a very handy technique to understand the process and what you're trying to do uh, in spreading the material before you move up to doing things under power hammers and things of that nature. Understanding how these materials move with all these fundamental techniques that I'm teaching you right now will take you further than learning any sort of project. I was told years I was told years ago by a man by the name of Wayne Apgar and it stuck with me ever since till now. He was one of my first instructors and I asked him, "How can I learn the most from this craft or from this this class?" And he told me, "Learn the process, not the project." And that really stuck with me and I that's what I've dedicated myself to for the rest of my life here from that moment on is learning the process, understanding the process better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, hit that like button if you liked it, and we will catch you on the next video. Make sure to just check back for all parts of this series. Like I said, this is a seven part series of the fundamentals of blacksmithing. And if you've just joined us, Please watch the other two videos in this series, and we will catch you on the next one. God bless you all, and have a great day.